Hi, good evening, all of you. This is uh, this is our webinar with University of Birmingham Law School. This is our sixth webinar. Uh, in fact, with them, they have uh, we have had uh, five different webinars with them, where uh, we have come to know about uh, uh, how it is about studying in uh, Birmingham Law School. The alumni has come, students have come and spoken about Birmingham as a city and university as a place to study. Uh, today is a webinar about LLM in UK. And uh, what are the USPs of studying LLM in UK? Why should you go and study LLM in UK? I mean, as an Indian student, uh, we all know that uh, uh, for the last 20 years, wherever people have tried to go to foreign shows to study, it has been either US or UK. Of course, uh, there has been other destinations now with Australia and Germany pitching in, but UK still is the second best, second preferred destination as far as Indian students go. <clears throat> so we are bringing to you today uh, uh, University of Birmingham Law School. Uh, I am going to hand it over to Dr. Jenny Papitas, who's, who teaches law, and she's going to take the lead in this webinar. Uh, she will introduce you to uh, the other colleagues there present in the webinar itself. Dr. Jenny, over to you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm lovely to be here and to be able to speak to you today about our LLM programs. Um, we've got some exciting offerings uh, in terms of LLM study at Birmingham. And so I'll be happy to, to talk to you about the programs that we offer. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. I've got a few slides uh, to talk through. So just bear with me for a couple of seconds while I just set that up. I've got it now. OK. So, postgraduate law at Birmingham then. Um, firstly, a little bit about the university itself. As you can see from this first image, um, we have a beautiful red brick campus here um, at Birmingham. Um, Birmingham is quite a prestigious institution as a university as a whole. So founded over 100 years ago in 1900, um, we uh, are within the top 100 top ranking universities in the world. And we actually have the fourth largest student population in the UK as a whole. Um, I think it's really uh, a really nice point about Birmingham that we have so many international students though. So you can see from the slide that we have uh, more than 7,000 international students from over 150 countries. Birmingham is really a global academic community of both staff and students. And it's a place where people come from all over the world to share their very different backgrounds and perspectives and where that um, all comes together to add to the educational experience of the students that come to us. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As you see also from the slide, then we're a founding member of the Russell Group um, of universities in the UK. Russell Group are um, leading 24 leading universities um, within the UK. Uh, this next slide then just gives you an overall image of the university campus itself. We're based in Edgbaston, which is a suburb of Birmingham. We're just a couple of miles from the city centre with its excellent transport links. But Edgbaston itself is a very green and pleasant place to be. And the campus, as I've said, is a beautiful red brick campus with many green spaces. Um, it's a very historic campus. You see the clock tower there at the center of it. Um, but we have some excellent um, and very modern facilities that sit alongside our historic buildings to make for a really outstanding campus um, and place to, to live and study. The law school itself then um, it, as you see from this slide, was has, has been in existence for over a hundred years. Um, the law school, or sorry, law was first taught at the university in nine, from 1904, um, not in a separate or dedicated law school, but as uh, as a subject that was delivered in our uh, or in the School of Commerce at the time. Um, but law, as a as a unique uh, academic discipline, obviously grew. And there has been a dedicated law school since 1928. Um, so law has a very long um, and prestigious history at the University of Birmingham. 
Uh, we have over 80 members of teaching staff today, uh, and those staff are experts in their own fields. Many of them are leading experts. Many of them uh, are write the leading textbooks for their areas, uh, engage in um, unique um, and important research and uh, deliver that research to many institutions all over the world, including to the World Bank, to the uh, EU institutions, um, to the UN, to various institutions within the UK. So the research that our staff are engaged in is really world leading. Um, in addition to that, then we have the research interests of the staff that feeds directly into the teaching that we deliver in the law school. Um, the teaching uh, is excellent. Uh, we aim to incorporate as much of that very world leading research that the staff engage in into our teaching so that our teaching is truly research led and students then can get the benefit of um, that excellent research that staff are, are involved with. Um, as I said, then the university as a whole has a large international cohort of students and staff, in fact, um, and in the law school that is the same with over 30% of our students um, being international students and currently from over 70 different countries. At the postgraduate level and particularly on the LLM, we have a, a very large focus on the building of a community, a, a learning community. We believe that's a really important part of your student experience um, and it enhances your learning uh, opportunities here. So it enables you to come together and freely share your thoughts and ideas with the other students and with staff as well in, a, in an environment where you feel safe and comfortable to do that. Um, and with there being so many international students, then again, we get that um, very important aspect of community life, which is the very different um, backgrounds and perspectives that people from different countries bring. And we really value that um, here in the law school. That's actually something that we encourage students to do. Um, as you see at the bottom point on this slide is the uh, superb graduate prospects and careers support, but my colleague, Paul McConnell is going to talk to you uh, more about that shortly. So, Postgraduate opportunities within the law school then. So you've already got your undergraduate law degree uh, and you're thinking about further study, what can Birmingham offer to you? We have a number of different options, um, beginning with master's level study. Um, at master's level then, the options are that you might take a campus-based uh, LLM course, either in Edgbaston, or there is some uh, scope for you to take the International uh, Commercial Law LLM at our Dubai campus as well. Uh, the Edgebaston programme is made up of a number of different pathways. Um, there is one programme, so the programme is the LLM programme, and within that, that then you can see the different pathways set out here on the slide that you are able to take. So we have commercial law, international commercial law, criminal law and criminal justice, international law and globalisation, uh, international law, crime, justice and human rights, and international trade law. In addition to that, then you'll see listed here the general LLM pathway. These pathways are very flexible uh, and there's an opportunity, depending on the modules that you uh, choose to study, there's an opportunity for you to switch um, between these pathways in order to uh, specialise in the area that you're most interested in. Equally, you might also choose to stay on the general LLM pathway and be able then to create a truly bespoke programme that suits you with a, a free choice of all of the modules that we uh, have on offer at any one time. Uh, where you choose a specialist pathway, then that will indicate uh, to any future employer or any future um, education institution, uh, the specialism that you have focused on for your LLM study. Um, as you can see then the uh, pathway or, or the option that we uh, are able to offer at our Dubai campus is the international commercial law uh, option. That's very popular, particularly in that region in Dubai, um, and means then that you have an additional option of studying uh, in Dubai rather than coming to the UK itself. The programme there, though, is still developed um, and somewhat delivered by U University of Birmingham academics 
um, but I'll talk a bit more about that shortly. In addition then to the campus based programs that we offer, we also have this LLM in energy and environmental law, which is a purely distance learning course. This has the advantage, of course, that you can do it remotely from wherever you happen to be based in the world. And it's a program that has been developed specifically for distance learning. Uh, and so many of its features cater specifically to the needs of people who are learning remotely. For those who have um, already got a master's level degree or are interested in going beyond master's, then of course, Birmingham offers a PhD and also PhD by distance learning, where again, you can benefit from uh, the vast and varieties of the staff in the law school um, in terms of undertaking doctoral research. For the campus-based Edgebaston module uh, program, then, uh, you can see from this slide, this, this slide gives you an indication of the range of optional modules that are available at our Edgebaston campus-based uh, program. Um, the, what you see here in the, with these modules is a reflection of the very varied interests of our staff. Um, we only run modules where we have staff available with the necessary expertise to deliver a master's level module um, and teaching uh, to a very high standard. So you can be um, assured that you're always being taught by an expert in the field, um, whichever module you happen to choose. In terms of thinking about modules then, the Edgebaston campus-based program uh, has the following features. So every student taking that program um, will take a legal research skills module. And this is an important module that will um, ensure that you have the necessary skills to be successful in your taught, other taught modules and also in the dissertation component of the program as well. That module runs in the first semester alongside two other modules. So you'll see the next point on the slide here is that there are five um, modules for you to choose from. Uh, so you, you take six modules in total the legal research, research skills module, plus five other modules that you choose from the list of available modules for that year. Legal research skills plus two other modules in semester one, and then three of your other optional modules in semester two. So you have three modules in each semester. Um, once the uh, taught modules are over with, you, that, at that point you will then undertake the bulk of the work around your dissertation, um, which makes up 60 credits uh, overall for, uh, towards the programme. Um, the programme is a total of 180 credits, so each of the modules is 20 credits with a total uh, of 120 credits, and then the dissertation is 60 credits. You'll see from the slide here that we uh, teach by way of seminar only. Um, at master's level, then we believe that students have uh, an underpinning of legal knowledge and skill already, and we don't want to simply impart information to you. We want to provide you with uh, teaching and learning opportunities that enable you to engage in deeper critical analysis of the material that you're covering and an opportunity then to be able to share your thoughts and ideas uh, and to develop that analysis further in the teaching sessions. And to that end, then we provide our teaching through seminars. Seminars, though, are done in small groups, relatively small groups of around, um, well, it will depend, but usually around uh, 15 to 25 people uh, in a seminar group. So, so relatively small size groups that allow for that individual discussion and development. As well as having the teaching staff for your modules, we also have uh, lots of support available to students in the law school through personal academic tutors, as well as uh, dedicated welfare tutors, um, and then, of course, uh, the international student tutor um, who would be available uh, to give you assistance as well. So that's a bit about our Edgebaston based uh, campus based programme. The programme in Dubai, as I've already said, is focused on international commercial law. Um, you'll see here then that we have a state-of-the-art campus um, in UAE, uh, where that is developed again by University of Birmingham academic staff. So you get a lot of the support, 
um, and excellence that uh, those studying at Edgebaston will get. Um, but here the focus is, of course, on international commercial law. Um, with this programme, then there is less in terms of choice of modules. Uh, you'll see that the, um, sorry, on the next slide, uh, all of the modules will be focused on international commercial law issues, as you would expect. And again, you will undertake six modules um, and we'll also do a dissertation uh, with this programme as well. Finally, then we have the LLM in Energy and Environmental Law, as I've already said. Again, the modules here are uh, focused on energy and environment law, as you would expect. But as I've already said, uh, the programme here has been specifically de designed for remote learners. Um, with lots of online support being available. Um, and of course, the added uh, advantage of this program is that you can uh, undertake it from wherever you happen to be in the world. So that's a bit about the programs that we offer and some of the unique features about Birmingham Law School and the University of Birmingham. Um, but I'm now gonna hand over to my colleague, Paul, who's just going to talk through some of the uh, employability and careers uh, points. Thanks, Paul. Thanks very much, Jenny, and hello everyone. I hope you're all well. Thank you very much for joining us for this webinar today. Just by way of introduction, as Jenny said, my name's Paul McConnell, and I'm a member of the teaching staff at Birmingham Law School, as well as teaching on the various programmes. My role also covers careers and employability, which is something I'll talk about quite a bit today. Also, it covers, covers what we call global engagement, which means liaising with potential students around the world who might be interested in coming to study at Birmingham Law School to help them make informed choices about the right steps for them. So the session generally, as you saw, was looking at why you might come to study a master's degree in the UK. And Jen has given us a fantastic overview of the various Birmingham programmes. So I'd like to talk a little bit more now around this idea of the benefits of studying a LLM in England at Birmingham specifically. And of course, we're really happy to answer all your questions as well. So whilst I'm talking, if there are particular questions that you'd like to raise, do keep those coming in and we'll be very happy to answer the questions either as I'm speaking for certain questions or else at the end, both Jenny and I will come in on whatever questions you might want us to cover with you. So now that we've heard all about the LLM at Birmingham, let's think about what are the specific benefits of an LLM. For a student from India, why would you even come to Birmingham to do a LLM? The key reason for many students is the fact that the English legal system and the law that you learn on the LLM is very well recognised worldwide. You'll be well aware that in England we have what's called a common law system and around the Commonwealth countries, including India, we find very similar legal systems. For example, as well as India, if you look at Australia or Canada, the United States, Dubai, the very similar legal systems and a knowledge of the law from an English LLM can really help to internationalize your experience and profile with regard to future employers. Now, obviously there's quite a lot of different countries with common law systems, but as um, was said at the start of the webinar, it's particularly the US and the UK that students often choose to come to for their master's degrees in law. So, so why is that? The reason really relates to the world of international business. If you look at international business transactions, very commonly they will be governed by American or English law in preference to the law of other legal systems. Therefore, as someone with knowledge of the Indian legal system from your earlier studies or experience, if you can combine that with the knowledge from an English LLM, it really does open up a world of international employers and international legal opportunities that, that wouldn't be available just with the legal knowledge from one country only. Now, when looking around at the different choices for a LLM, let's say you've decided that you, you think you might be interested in coming to England for this. Another key attraction to England is the really wide range of high quality law schools and universities that are available here. England 
is obviously only quite a small country geograph geographically and certainly in terms of population compared to India. But we have a really large number of world renowned universities. There's a good number of English universities that rank consistently within the top 100 universities worldwide, including, of course, University of Birmingham. At the start of the presentation, Jenny mentioned the Russell Group, which is the group of 24 leading UK universities, including Oxford, Cambridge and Birmingham. These are very much recognised as equivalent to the American Ivy League universities, which have that really high profile and are very much in demand from students. So as well as the international reputation of English universities, another very attractive factor is the diverse study environment. And, and that's common to quite a few English law schools, although I feel the environment at Birmingham is particularly diverse. And it's diverse in a couple of different ways. First of all, the variety of different subject specialisations that we have. You saw from the lists of courses that Jenny presented that there's courses available across commercial law, through to human rights, through to criminal law. So you can have a very diverse experience looking at combining your study of different areas of law and legal practice. Also from an international perspective, the law school is very diverse. We have staff from all over the world, teaching students from all over the world. If you look at our current cohort, um, it's the minority of students who are actually from England. There's a good number of English students, but we also have students from India, China, Nigeria, the Middle East, Thailand, really across the world, we attract students to come and study there at, um, at Birmingham and it creates a really interesting learning environment. As Jenny explained, most of your classes are in small groups where you're interacting with a relatively small number of your fellow students and you will find students from across the world in those groups. It's great for generating friendships, hearing different viewpoints and also building up a professional network for your future career across the globe. Now the next point is something that I'm particularly keen to focus on which is international career development. I'm actually going to be running a webinar at the same time next week with LawSico about international careers and particularly how you can use English legal qualifications to develop an international legal career. But I think for our students from India and elsewhere who come to study our masters, very much at the front of their minds is the wish to develop a really successful international career. So let's think about how you can do that. One key aspect is having the master's degree in itself. It's very well recognized, we've said across the world with many different employers and in many different legal systems. But also, whilst at Birmingham, there is the opportunity to gain international legal work experience. I'm not sure if you'll have heard, but the UK government recently changed the visa system for students coming to study degrees in the UK. And now there's a potential for LLM students to obtain a two year post study work visa at the end of their LLM programs. So if you're coming to Birmingham to do your masters, there's potentially scope to then stay for a couple of years working in a whole range of roles, obviously not just purely legal roles that that visa could in theory cover a wide range of different work opportunities that you might look to take on after your studies and it's a really attractive part of coming to study in the UK. You're not just there potentially for your course, there are also work opportunities afterwards that you can look to build up. Those opportunities can have a couple of key benefits. One can be for those students who are interested in developing a career in the UK, gaining those post-study work opportunities can help to direct you towards that successful UK career. But also if you're looking to return to India or go to other countries around the world, if you've got some UK based work experience that can make you very marketable to employers worldwide as well. We'll talk a bit more as well about ways in which Birmingham Law School helps to facilitate your work experience whilst you're studying with us as well. But hopefully you can see that there's this big attraction of not just the study, but also work experience alongside and after your studies as well. Finally, 
a key attraction of coming to the UK to study a master's is, of course, the international living experience. The UK is a very international country where, as well as experiencing UK culture, you can experience cultures all around the world and in the heart of Europe. Clearly, it's very easy to travel from the UK around to our neighbouring countries and explore Europe as well. Hopefully, you can see then that an LLM in England does present a really valuable way to spend a year. It's not just an academic experience, it's an international living experience. It's also a huge step towards furthering and developing your international career. And certainly when we get to the questions, we can go through a few more points around that. But specifically what I'd like to focus on now, and um, Jenny, if you wouldn't mind moving to the next slide, is one particularly unique feature of Birmingham Law School, which is very attractive to our students that come on master's programmes. Within the law school, as well as our academic activities that, that Jenny outlined around the teaching that we do, we have a unique centre called Kepler, the Centre for Professional Legal Education and Research. This sits alongside the academic activities of the law school. And the aim is that Kepler helps you to develop your professional experiences and competences. We've already spoken about the opportunities from the LLM in, in terms of career development, but, but Kepler is very much central to that. So what is Kepler? Well, it's staffed by people like me who have actually had experience working in the legal sector. I used to be a, a lawyer, a solicitor, as we call them in the UK, at one of the large international American law firms. So people like me will help you as well as developing your academic knowledge in developing professional experiences. So first of all, within Kepler, we run a really excellent careers programme, and that has a couple of elements to it, but every week we run a whole variety of information and networking sessions to help you gain exposure to different international employers and develop your understanding of what exactly they're looking for. If I give you an example of this week's programme, um, today we're running a session with a um, Canadian law school looking at opportunities in the legal profession in Canada. On Wednesday, we'll be running training sessions around interviewing and assessment centres to help students with looking to get legal employment in UK law firms. We'll also be running a session with one of our alumni who graduated from Birmingham Law School and is now a government legal lawyer in the UK, having worked in Canada, Israel, India and Greece previously, and she'll, she'll be talking all about her international career as well. We're also running some skills based sessions where some of our alumni come back and help support our students with some of the written exercises that you often have to complete as part of the recruitment processes within international law firms. So really the message is that through the Kepler Careers Programme, you gain a huge amount of knowledge and experience that will help you in looking for suitable legal or other graduate employment. The focus of the programme is obviously towards UK careers, but knowing how many international students we have, we do have specific weeks of activities within Kepler, which are focused on international students and supporting international students with developing legal careers around the world. A second key part of Kepler's activities is our advocacy programme. Advocacy, I'm sure you're familiar with, is this skill of going into court and speaking as a lawyer, and it's a very much in-demand skill from legal employers. Within advocacy, we include client interviewing, we include negotiation, we also include mooting. If you're not familiar with that term, it's this skill of taking on a mock case and arguing the legal points in the case before a judge who is usually a, a member of law school staff. But all of those activities really help you to develop your professional skills that employers are looking for in, in aspiring lawyers. Through Kepler, we have a really wide range of advocacy opportunities, both training opportunities, which are run by one of my colleagues who's a specialist advocate. And then also there's quite a number of different competitions you can take part in competing both internally against Birmingham Law School students in relation to debating or, or mooting or interviewing. And then also externally, we compete against other UK and international law schools in competitions as well. Finally, we have many different 
work experience opportunities available as well. Obviously, the current year has been rather different from normal with the pandemic limiting the scope for this. But in the year before the pandemic took place, we had over 100 different work placements for students through Birmingham Law School, which we arrange with different employers. The placements tend to be quite short, usually a week to two weeks, although some can be a bit longer. And they're with a whole variety of different employers from large commercial law firms through to firms specialising in family law or criminal law or even in-house legal departments. And in those placements, what we're doing is giving our top performing students the opportunities to gain that practical experience alongside their studies that employers will be looking for. Overall, then, thinking about Kepler, it really does provide a great addition to your studies and we get fantastic feedback from our students about not just the academic scope of the master's programme, but also the Kepler extracurricular activities which really contribute towards your professional development. I would say in terms of looking at UK and other international law schools, it's well worthwhile looking to see what do they have? Have they got something similar to Kepler? Are there similar activities? And are you sure that as well as being a really good academic experience, the programme will give you those extras that are very much what employers will be looking for? So I hope that gives a bit of a feel for some of the reasons for doing a master's degree in the UK and the employability angle and how we support that. As I said, I will be delivering another webinar next week with quite a lot more detail about international careers off the back of a, a UK law degree. But for now, before we go to some final slides, I thought it might be quite good if we have a look at some of the questions that are coming in. I can see there's been quite a number. I haven't been able to read them all, um, but I can see that there, there's quite a few um, specific um, questions um, coming in. So shall we go to those now and, and start to talk through some of them? Yeah, I think Paul, you should do that. I think uh, Ben has been answering them quite actively. I think some Great. of them, some of them, still remains to be answered. Probably you can pick up one of them. Great. So yeah, I can see quite a number of questions coming through. I'm just quickly trying to read them. Um, I don't know, um, Jenny or my colleague Ben is also with us. Ben is our admissions manager for law. Um, are there any particular questions that would be good to answer? Um, Paul, there was, a, there was an interesting one about um, the opportunity for placements during the, the LLM uh, as well as where that comes from. I think there was a few questions up, um, but, okay. but somebody was quite interested in around kind of getting actual work experience during the, during the LLM right, as well. Let's have a look. I'll certainly answer that one next because that, um, that would link very well to what I've just been saying. So I can just find the question. So I can't, can't see it, but shall I talk a bit, I'll talk a bit more around that. I, I can see lots of questions, but not that specific one. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the work experience opportunities. So as I said, first of all, there are lots of opportunities within Kepler itself. Obviously, students do have to apply for those opportunities, and we try to make sure they're distributed fairly amongst students. So there will be a number of LLM students who manage to take on those opportunities, but they are also available to our undergraduate students. And, and we match up students to the vacancies that are available depending on their experience and where it, it best fits in. Now aside from the immediate Kepler placements within Birmingham Law School there's many other different ways in which you can gain experience. First of all most British law firms will offer work experience programs of their own and we're very proactive in the law school in promoting those opportunities to our students. There's lots of information made available, there's support with applying, and we have a really close relationships with, with many different employers who actively promote their vacancies on campus. So you'll find actually there's thousands of vacancies in the UK you could apply for, for international work experience. They are competitive vacancies, so it, it will be the very top candidates that the legal employers are looking for, but there are, as I say, thousands of opportunities you can apply for. Beyond that, there's numerous different vacancies that arise in quite an informal way every year. We have a weekly law school newsletter and we make available in that 
information to students about different opportunities and that can be one off opportunities opportunities for charity or voluntary work that you can get involved with which is always great for your cv or resume also there will be opportunities to gain work experience at the university the university is very keen to engage our current students to undertake paid work within the university so i guess the key message is to keep a lookout at all of the information both from the law school the university and employers and you will find that there are many different opportunities you can apply for whether that's gaining legal work experience or more general skills and experience the feedback we get all the time from legal employers in the uk and worldwide is that legal work experience is one important aspect but they really value any work experience all sorts of work experience gives different transferable skills and if you can demonstrate for example team working or communication skills through other work experience that will be really valuable in making you a more employable candidate for vacancies that you apply for in the future so i hope that answers the question on work experience um you can see quite a bit more information coming through. Um, so, there was, sorry, there was an interesting question earlier in the chat about whether we offer um, any technology type modules um, and IP law. Uh, and I thought it would be a good opportunity actually to mention uh, a new programme that we're offering that, that we hadn't covered in the slides, but that might be of interest to, to those who have tuned in today. Um, so the answer is that we do offer uh, an IP, an intellectual property module as part of our uh, LLM programme offering. But also now I'd quite like to have the chance to just um, to just show this programme, which is quite new for this coming year um, from 2021. And that's uh, an MSc rather than an LLM uh, in responsible data science. But as you see from the entry requirements here, um, it's actually aimed specifically at those who have a law background already, so those with a, an undergraduate law degree. Um, and this is a, 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 multi, a, a multidisciplinary programme, if you like, that combines uh, aspects of technology with aspects of law and the regulation of technology um, in a very exciting uh, project, uh, sorry, an exciting programme. And as you see here from the website, um, this programme was created in collaboration with industry and actually has employability as, a, as one of its key aims because there are lots of law firms now who are looking specifically for law graduates that have um, expertise in data science as well. Um, the modules that are on offer for this programme um, you see at the bottom of this page and of course you can just Google MSc in Responsible Data Science for Birmingham and you'll find this web page for anybody that is interested. Um, you see here that we have modules such as programming for data science, the algorithms for data science and storing and managing data, um, but also then some modules around regulation. So regulation of technology um, and looking at socio-technical systems um, and contemporary case studies there. So in terms of law and technology then, I think this is a really exciting uh, programme that we haven't had the chance to talk about so far today. So hopefully that um, provides a bit of an answer for those people who are interested or, or were, who are asking about um, law and technology type um, offerings that we might have. Thanks, Jenny, that's really helpful and um, completely agree with what Jenny said about these mixed skills between law and data science being very much in demand with employers. Um, I've seen a couple more questions that um, I think I can quite usefully respond to. Um, if, if I just quickly cover those, we had a, a question um, come through from Somya about career prospects after the LLM. I, I spoke, spoke a bit about career prospects, but, but to expand on that. So, so what would the prospects be? What, why would you do it? I suppose it's one way of adding something different to your profile as an Indian lawyer. So for example, with, within India, having not just an Indian legal education, but also an international legal education is I know very desirable and speaking to a number of our postgraduate Indian students, that's the reason why they came to the UK to look at further career development, further opportunities in India or with international organizations based around an international legal qualification. 
obviously quite a number of students do look to come to um, Birmingham with a view to a legal career outside of India as well. And the LLM is a, a very good starting point for that. Um, I would say in terms of employers in, for example, the UK or in Dubai, um, it would generally be quite difficult to gain employment without um, a legal qualification based on the, the English system in a lot of cases. So having an LLM helps with making your employability profile more international and makes you a more appealing hire for, for those sorts of international law firms that are looking for people, maybe not just with Indian qualifications and experience, but also more of an international educational profile. And it's very common if, if we look across, let's say, UK law firms or um, Dubai law firms to see people who may be done um, undergraduate studies or some studies of law in India and then have done a master's degree internationally, which has given them that stepping stone into, into a, a more internationally focused career outside of India. So I would say it's a great way to look at opening up um, different careers um, around the world and in India as well, by just having that more diverse experience that you gain from the LLM in the UK. Now, um, any other questions that anyone thinks would be helpful to cover? I don't know if Jenny or Ben, you've seen any others you'd like to go through at all. So I was just gonna come in because I saw there was a few questions around um, scholarships. So I was just going to highlight, I have put a couple of links in the chat as well, um, but we do have some Birmingham specific scholarships, which are suitable for international students. So we offer something called the, the Harding International Legal Scholarship, uh, which is a fee waiver of up to £5,000 off your tuition fees. Um, we actually did a, a, a chat with one of the recipients of that, Naya, who uh, was with our last webinar with Law Sicko. So it's worth catching up on that to find out a bit more about her experience um, but they're available to international students for this upcoming year uh, and we're also very lucky now that the university itself is launching a commonwealth scholarship uh, in celebration of the commonwealth games coming to birmingham in 2022 so that is another uh, fee waiver scholarship that would be uh, eligible as well so i'll post another couple of links in the chat but there's definitely a lot of good opportunities at the moment um, linking to the msc uh, program as well in responsible data science we're actually offering up to £10,000 of fee waivers for students considering that programme as well. Um, so again, the criteria is all on the website and I'll post the links there, uh, but it's a very good time to be applying to be at Birmingham uh, for an international student, I would say. That's great to hear, Ben. It sounds like some, some really exciting opportunities. And, and as Ben says, all of the information um, you'll find on the website for that. So, um, Jenny, is there anything else you'd like to add at all, whether in answer to question or more generally about um, the LLM in, in Birmingham? Uh, not so much about the LLM, but I was just going to go over the last couple of slides just in order to finish off the presentation, if, if, if it's an appropriate time to do that now, do you think, Paul? I think, I think so, yes. Okay, so uh, just showing the screen again. So thanks to Paul then for, um, for the really excellent uh, information about what, you know, the benefits of coming to Birmingham in terms of careers and also the activities of Kepler. We're so lucky at Birmingham to have Kepler. It's a really unique institution within a law school that provides such outstanding connections with uh, legal practice, um, legal practitioners. Um, as I say, we're very lucky to have that. Um, the, the last couple of slides then are just looking more generally at Birmingham and our campus and what it might be like um, to come to Birmingham um, in the UK. This slide is quite interesting. So it shows uh, the campus itself, which is this smaller ring here. You see, um, actually, it's a bit broader. So it goes, goes round to the side here um, and extends a little bit further over this way as well. But actually a really nice um, photograph here that demonstrates how green it is um, in, in the Edgebaston suburb of Birmingham and what a pleasant place it is to be. But really this slide is, is aiming to show you the proximity of the campus to the city centre. So this larger ring here is Birmingham city centre. Birmingham obviously has its own international airport. It has excellent rail links, um, quite fast rail links through to London and all of the onward travel from London internationally as well. So to Europe um, by train or ferry or by air and obviously then to the rest of the world. 
through the international airports that are down in London as well. Um, and so what I think this shows is uh, that although Birmingham uh, it might not be your kind of the most obvious choice or your, your most obvious thought when you think of the UK, I think lots of people are drawn towards London, but Birmingham has a lot, an awful lot to offer in terms of quality of life. Uh, the green spaces that we have available, but within a very short distance, then we have a large city with excellent uh, international transport links. Um, so that's a little bit about our positioning geographically. Just a few uh, interesting facts then about our campus. As I've said a number of times now, it is a really historic red brick campus, absolutely beautiful. But we have some really outstanding and very, very modern facilities uh, for students to use. So as you see here, then we have a 276 acre campus that has recently had its, uh, what we refer to as the green heart, um, has been restored to the campus. So we had a very large, uh, older library building in the in the heart of the campus which has been taken down to make way for um, a beautiful green space that is now referred to as the green heart of the campus um, and in its place uh, the library has had a brand new uh, state-of-the-art building that put up for 21st century use so that's a very new um, facility that's available to students. As I've just shown you from the photograph then, we are only a couple of miles from the city centre and the campus itself has its own train station. Uh, so it's very easy to travel and move around uh, from Birmingham University from the campus through to Birmingham city centre. And then as I've already said, on either to the airport, which also has uh, a train station. So you can go straight through on the train to the airport or through very easily to uh, London um, and to obviously other parts of the UK as well. The campus itself, then we have 13 different library and resource centres available for your use, um, as well as various computer suites um, and facilities, uh, IT facilities that are available with free internet uh, for everyone on campus. Uh, there are a number of banks, shops, cafes, lots of facilities uh, on campus, everything that you really need. And in addition to the new library, which I've also mentioned, uh, we have a, a very recent brand new sports centre with absolutely outstanding sporting facilities. You saw on the earlier uh, slide, I can go back to it now briefly. You can see here are um, brilliant pitches here, some all weather pitches, some grass pitches. Uh, tennis courts, football, hockey, and then this building here uh, at the bottom right hand of your screen is the brand new sports facility with a brand new swimming pool and all of the sporting facilities that you might expect uh, from a modern institution. So uh, an outstanding campus, a beautiful place to live and to study, but with excellent transport links. Uh, to London and to the rest of the UK and beyond internationally as well, puts us um, in a really uh, unique position uh, in terms of uh, what we have to offer to prospective students. So I think that's all from me today, um, Paul, unless you have anything else to offer or to, to add, sorry. Um, but here on this last slide then, uh, it just... Uh, an email address for any queries that you may have in relation to the LLM or indeed for the MSc in Responsible Data Science um, and a website there that will give you all the details of our programmes. Um, Paul, was there anything you wanted to add or Ben? No, I think you've covered it all really well, <laughs> Benny. Just, I suppose, two tiny things about the city of Birmingham that might be quite use, um, useful. Ben, ben touched on one of them, just the fact that we have the Commonwealth Games coming to Birmingham. So in 2022, um, I think that will be a really ex exciting time. We're, we're, we're going to be um, doing quite a lot of activities linked to India in that year as well, with the fact that the, the Commonwealth Games will be in, in Birmingham. So we're all looking forward to that. Um, another thing I would just add is that the University of Birmingham has a unique India Institute which focuses on the relations between the university and India and again I think that gives rise to lots of interesting opportunities for Indian students studying in Birmingham and finally um, just in terms of the city of Birmingham if you're not familiar with it one thing it's very well known for in the UK 
um, is the, the high population locally, which has origins in, in India. So um, you, you, in coming to Birmingham, you can find it's quite a comfortable, diverse city to settle into as well, which is, I think, very appealing for a lot of students. But, but those are the only other things I'd add, other than um, just a, a quick mention again of the webinar, webinar I'm doing at this time next week, which will focus specifically on how you could use your English legal qualifications as, as an Indian student to, to open up opportunities in terms of qualifying as a lawyer, both in the UK and a little more internationally as well. But thank you for listening, everyone. I think we have covered all the questions also. Well, thank you very much, Saptashi. That's been a, gr a great webinar. Thank, thank you for, for hosting us again. And thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Chenny. Ben, well. thank you. Ben, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you again next week. I guess we have another one coming up. Thank you so much. I shall be in touch. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Forward to it. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, everyone.